section 1.3 is a short one. Right? You'll love this. All we got to talk about here are physical and chemical properties in a couple slides. The properties and the changes right, that accompany these things. So let's jump into it. Okay? Starting with physical properties. Okay? Physical properties. And the question we're answering here, okay? can you observe this property without changing or altering the chemical state of whatever you're looking at? Okay? Because both these physical and chemical properties are used to distinguish different substances, right? but they're two different subsets, physical properties and chemical properties, physical changes and chemical changes. Right, so can we look at this without altering the chemical state? Okay? For the physical property, you see the definition right there in the middle, characteristic of matter not associated with a change in the chemical composition. So it can change state, for example, in a physical change, it could go from a liquid to a gas. If you boil water, it's still water, right? Went from a liquid to a gas. Okay? Those are physical properties. We didn't change the fact that it's H2O. So density, color, hardness, melting and boiling points, electrical conductivity, all examples of physical properties. Okay? Things you can observe without changing the chemical state. Density, color, hardness, conductivity, those ones are pretty easy, don't tend to be too confusing, but I already alluded to those other two. Melting and boiling points tend to be the ones where people get tricked, okay? So don't fall for that. It can go from a solid to a liquid to a gas, or a gas to a liquid to a solid anyway, right? It's not changing its chemical composition, it's just changing its physical state. So those are physical properties. And here we see some physical changes. Right. Wax, we talked about candles with experiment one. Okay. Solid wax is heated, forms liquid wax. It just went from a solid to a liquid, still wax. Okay. Physical change. Steam condensing on the right-hand side, going from a gas right inside the pot, condensing on the lid there, going from a gas to a liquid, still just a physical change. Dissolving is another one that's tricky. Right. If you take table salt and dissolve it in water, well, it's still salt in the water. You just form salt water. So that's still just a physical change, physical property, physical change. Okay? Know those two. And the flip side of them, chemical properties and chemical chains. And to identify a chemical property, you just have to think about, well, is there some sort of change in the chemical composition that's going on? Okay. So did it change to a different chemical identity? Okay, so flammability. If you burn something, right, you have a fire, right? You can't get that fire back easily. You change the chemical composition. That is a chemical property, flammability. Toxicity is another one in your body, right? It has to undergo a reaction inside your body to be toxic. Acidity, chemical change. Any sort of chemical reaction, right? Reactivity, that's an easy one. And heat of combustion, just like flammability if something's combusting. Okay, so a chemical change. Just always think to yourself, is there, or sorry, a chemical property, think to yourself, is there a chemical change? Because that's going to produce some type of matter that's different than what you started with. Okay. So rusting, for example, right? that's a chemical change. It formed something new that wasn't there before, probably happened to some extent on the bottom of your car. Okay. And we can use those physical and chemical properties to help identify properties of matter. And this is where we finish section 1.3. Last definition, extensive properties and intensive properties. Okay? And we can use these types of properties to sort our elements into groups. So an extensive property depends on the amount of matter present. Okay? So if you change the amount of matter, you change the value of this extensive property. Okay? Mass, volume, right? those are easy ones. Heat and temperature, we'll talk about those more in chapter five and what the difference in those is and why one's extensive and one's intensive. Okay. Intensive properties don't depend on the amount of matter present. Okay, so the density of something is the same regardless of if it's big or small. All right. Whereas the mass, if you increase the size of something, it takes up, it has more matter, therefore more mass. Okay. So from section 1.3, no physical and chemical properties physical and chemical changes within them, and extensive and intensive properties. Then for the rest 
of chapter one. We transition from talking about these properties and atoms and molecules to talking about math and numbers and measurements.